Did I buy the wrong bike? Bad issue. Test riding the Aprilia Touareg 660. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to my channel. Uh, I think I may have bought the wrong bike when I bought the Tenere 700. But the reason, one of the top reasons I bought that bike is there were no Aprilia dealerships within a four, four and a half hour uh, radius of where I lived or where I'm living. And I didn't want to make that drive somewhere to buy a bike where I wouldn't be able to get parts very easily. Well, would you know it, three months after I bought the, the Tenere 700, a dealership picked up Aprilia and now they rep Aprilia's. So that has got me out on the Aprilia Touareg 660. And it's an extended test ride, but maybe not everything I would wanna do. I'm doing a little bit of dirt riding here, uh, just trying it out. I don't know if the uh, helmet footage is gonna come out, but I have to say a couple of my initial impressions of this bike is I absolutely love having electronic cruise control. Um, that is something on the Tenere that is driving me nuts for long distance travel. The tubeless tires, uh, um, tubeless wheels, huge improvement. I am sick of dealing with tubes. This makes things much easier. And these are all things that we knew about, but riding the bike, now that I've got a chance to get out and ride it, it is incredibly nimble. It's very agile, uh, moving it, flicking it back and forth on the road, feels good. Um, the little bit of off-road, the thing that stands out incredibly well off-road, and I've just been kind of bumping through here, is the suspension. Oh my goodness, for a stock suspension, it stays high in its travel, and it can smash through things very easily without blowing through. I am really, really impressed. And as a, a first impression test ride, um, some of that is probably coming out. Some of the other things, this is a terrible day. It's about 45 degrees, it's raining, it's snowing in places, and it's a great time to test a bike in this kind of weather um, because the weather protection that I am getting from this bike is awesome. It, uh, the tanks stick out quite wide, and so my legs are staying warm. I don't have anything other than just my pants on my legs in 45 degree temperatures staying warm, which is a huge key. Now, I know this engine generates quite a bit of heat from the catalytic converter, and I can feel it in my feet. I can feel the heat coming off the engine, um, but on a day like this, I like it. When it's 90, 100 degrees, uh, I probably won't like it so much, but um, it gives it, it allows me to actually feel that heat because it is a cold day and my feet are warm and I can feel it, so I know that that's generating a lot of heat. That may be problematic um, doing a lot of slow speed off-road riding, uh, but for here, um, I don't mind it so much. A uh, couple of the other things is the low seat height. I can nearly sit flat footed with both feet. I have a 33 inch inseam and that means that when I go off-road, it's gonna give me a lot more control because I can get my feet down when I'm trying to get through things, maybe go slow if I need to dab, especially when I have luggage on. So I really like that as well. And I have to say the seat, at least for the hour I've been riding, is pretty comfortable. Um, so I don't know what it'll be like being on it for eight or nine hours. I don't think any seat is comfortable for that amount of time, but uh, I think this would work pretty well. Now, the other thing ergonomically is the windscreen. It's not bad. It's putting air right about the top of my helmet, which seems fine. I mean, it is a short, short windscreen. I actually was expecting to get it mid chin. So at like 60 miles an hour, it's just about getting over my head and there isn't a ton of wind noise, which, um, which is pretty good because that means I don't have to go out and get different windscreens. I can use the stock one just fine. A couple of the other things that I have noticed is the bars are pretty wide. They have a pretty decent sweep to them, but the mirrors, the mirrors are incredibly wide. I can see behind me really, really easily. I don't know if I've ever ridden a bike with such wide mirrors with such good visibility behind me. So I really like that. Um, the modes, modes are pretty easy to switch through. I don't, I'm not totally familiar with how to work with those, 
but it, it seems okay. Uh, out here riding on a little bit of dirt, I think the traction control is fairly intrusive right now because I'm not able just to break the rear loose too easily uh, in second, third gear, but I think that might be a matter of just uh, adjusting the modes. The bike kind of feels like uh, my, my GS, but like a miniature version of it. The way the tank feels, the way the bars are, the way you kind of sit up on it instead of sitting down in it uh, because the tank feels pretty low. I like that feel. It's very comfortable. And I have to say, this is a, a very intuitive bike to ride. Um, no, it's really hard to find any negative things in such a short ride. It would take time to do it. But I have to say, in this uh, ride that I'm doing, I am, um, I guess to say, a bit blown away by how this bike feels. Engine-wise, it's great. I keep it high in the revs, 4,500 or better. Has plenty of throttle response. Now, I will say the throttle response isn't quite like it is on my Tenere. The Tenere, um, it rips a little bit more but um, this even has more horsepower. So they, they feel similar, but I, I feel like the, the Tenere when I get on the throttle is, is hitting it a bit harder. The looks of the Touareg, I know some people really don't like this front end. I actually like it, I don't mind it. I like the unique look of it. I like the running lights um, that it has. Uh, so I, I just, I don't know, it gives it uh, an aggressiveness maybe. I don't know, I like it. I know other people have complained about it, but I'm, I'm perfectly happy with that. There's a few things that have to be done to this bike, just like uh, any bike, and that is the skid plate, of course. Um, and there's plenty of, of variety of skid plates out there that's pretty easy uh, to find, so not a big deal. The other thing that I really like about this bike is this also has a progressive uh, rear linkage on the suspension, but the link doesn't stick down. It actually is flush with the bottom of the engine, so you don't have to worry about rocks kicking up now i think the skid plates i've seen they do have protectors that go across just in case something kicks up but it doesn't stick down it's not like an anchor point on the bike which that is something i really really like especially after my experience on my t7 the exhaust hanger i'm looking at it right now there are two bolts in there so if this gets bent this is replaceable that wouldn't uh, be a big deal to replace the hanger here and uh, honestly, if you're doing a ton of off-roading, maybe you buy a spare one of these and just keep it on the bike. In the event you do bend the exhaust in, you can just replace it really easily. All right, a couple of last thoughts as I'm, I'm thinking about it as I was riding. The brakes, man, the brakes are incredibly grabby in a good way, uh, controlled stops. So I like that part of it. Um, not all bikes have that. So just as a, as a final thought. So I, I really need to stop fawning over this bike. It is, um, for this short duration of riding it, very, very impressive. Um, I wasn't sure what to expect. I kind of thought it would feel a lot like my Tenere, and it actually doesn't. I think if I was to compare, this feels more like my old GS than it does my Tenere, just with um, the way that it feels riding ergonomically. Um, power, of course, isn't there. But um, with the cruise control, being able to relax, the bend of the bars, the wind protection, all of these different things. So, um, yeah, I, I really have to say that after riding this, I am going to buy one of these. I don't know when and I don't know how right now. I've got to figure a few things out. But I think for long term, this suits my needs much more than the other bikes that I've had. It has very decent off-road chops with good ground clearance, really good suspension, plus tubeless tires and electronic cruise control. So I don't, don't, don't know what that's going to mean for the Tenere 700, if I'm going to hold on to that for a little bit, or if I just uh, kick it to the curb for this. Mm, not sure. That's why I say it's going to take me a little while to figure things out. But I would say probably in the next six to eight months i will be riding one of these and it will likely become my primary bike so um these are just my thoughts on on this bike if you've had your own chance to ride this bike and have your own thoughts leave that in the comments below and uh i'm just curious to see uh what everyone else thinks about the Touareg. i know i am very late to the Touareg game it's been reviewed all over the place tons of people have ridden it and uh but i'm thinking for a long-term bike this might be the one for me. Um, 
I've even continued doing research on some of the problems that have came up and there's been a few problems here and there but for the volume of bikes that they have released the problems have been pretty minimal and I think in the 2024 models uh, the problems they had in the earlier ones seem to be taken out so anyway I know that's a bit of a ramble at the end because I'm very uh, uh, excited about this bike I am definitely fanboying over it and and gushing because it um, has surprised the heck out of me so anyway, um, I'm going to wrap it up here. If you haven't done it yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Um, continue to look for uh, 390 Adventure content, 10700 content, and probably in the next six to eight months, we're going to be doing some uh, tour ride content as well. So get out, do some riding, ride safe, and I will see you out there.